What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our Doodle Jump series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 3, in which case you should have quite a bit of your Doodle Jump game set up. And in this video, we'll be fixing up everything and we will be making sure that our entire game works out. So without further ado, let's get right into our code. All right, so in the last video, what we did was we left it off uh, at the scrolling function, I believe. So uh, when we uh, do define this function, we have to keep in mind that within our platform, we had this uh, when I received scroll down message and we scrolled. So we literally just changed Y by negative five, 10 times. So what I need to do is to do the same thing for the doodle jump, just to make sure that, you know, there are no differences with uh, the platform moving and the doodle jump not. So uh, all we have to do is just broadcast that scroll down message. And I'm going to head over to events and say broadcast scroll down. And after we do that, we need to do the exact same thing that our platform did. So repeat 10 and change Y by negative five. So we have a nice little, you know, gentle slope that's going to go on when we uh, do press the, uh, when we do um, reach up. So now I'm going to test this out and move, and then we can move up once again. And this is a pretty easy level. So there you go. And okay, we don't have the scrolling yet. And that's probably because I didn't have a forever loop at all where we had the scrolling. And we don't have to put the scrolling within this forever loop because if we do, you'd start to notice that the scrolling goes horribly wrong. And that's because we need the scrolling to execute parallelly while the rest of the code is executing on um, by itself. So add in uh, another when I receive initialize and then a forever loop. And within this forever loop, you can put uh, the scrolling block inside. So once you do that and now you test your program out, you should notice that while well, your scrolling worked out. Now, obviously that was a little bit odd with regard to what happened there. So when we move up and then we move up once again, you can see that things changed a little bit too much, but we will be fixing that right now. Okay. So the reason for this bug was within our platform, when we called in the switch function, we did not really check where our block was with respect to the Y axis. And because of that, all our blocks had this change in them and that made our game really, really get stuck. So what we need to do is add in an additional condition check right here. And we have to check if the Y position is below, uh, below this doodle jump guys. So I'm going to see if Y position is uh, less than, or if negative 140 is greater than the Y position, then I will be brought, um, executing all of this code. But if this is not the case, then I won't be doing anything at all. So now when we do press the green flag, you can see that well, we move up. And when we finally scroll up, you can see that new blocks are created all the time. And once again, I'm going to move up here and you can see that we have block after block coming up. Now there are still not as many blocks as I want to. And that's probably because not all our code is executing and most of our blocks are going down and down. And um, it's not that easy to fix that, but we will be doing that right now. All right. I just went through my code and the error turned out to be this, where we had our switch function and instead of going to the Y position, what we have to do is to go to Y150. So it's going to be right at the top so that we have a little more clones to work with. So now we can see if we move our stuff around and we finally scroll up, you can see that blocks keep getting created upwards and not downwards. And that is already pretty cool. And if you also monitor your score closely, you will notice that it changes uh, kind of with random intervals every single time. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty big improvement uh, with our code since our clones are coming up. And that is pretty much going to be the main aspect of our game. What I'm going to do now is to make sure that when our, our doodle jump guy falls down, um, uh, we switch into the end screen where you uh, basically say, you know, if you want to play again, you can click on that button. Uh, and we also have the score of the player shown to him. Okay, so now I'm going to import another sprite or upload another sprite. And this time we're going to just say um, upload play again, which should be in your sprite folder. And uh, this play again is only going to be showing when the player loses in the end. So when green flag is clicked, we will hide and we will also hide when we receive initialize because at the end, if the player uh, presses, you know, the play again button, then we'd want to start the game all over again. So when I receive initialize, then I will hide and um, 
Also, when we receive player wins, and I'm sorry, not wins, when we receive player loses, then we will show. But before we show, I will do a couple of things. I will go to, um, go to, x is going to be, uh, I think, 0, and y is going to be negative uh, 75. So it's going to be right below this um, play again button and it's uh, that yeah that's pretty much going to be it so the uh, this play button is going to tell the score so uh, now I'm going to head back to the play button and say when I receive when I receive uh, when I receive a player lose then I will be showing myself once again we don't really even have to go to any position because we've already programmed that when the green flag is clicked so we show and uh, we also say so head over to looks and grab this block which says say hello for two seconds and instead of hello I'm going to head over to operators grab a join and say um, your score uh, and follow that up with a colon and then a space and you can put in the score variable here and this is going to convert it into a string so that we can basically say your score was whatever score you got and yep uh, this is pretty much going to be it and right after we say that this uh, code is once again going to be active because the sprite is visible and we can click on it. So that is pretty much going to be all we need within this sprite. And now we can head over to the doodle jump guy and um, scroll down below and say when I receive a uh, player lose, then we will just be hiding and we will also stop all the scripts that are happening within the sprite so that nothing really executes. So instead of stop all, I'm going to say stop all other scripts in sprite and um, same way, I'm going to head over to the platform sprite. And this time, it's not just a hide. We will need a little bit more. So when I receive play or lose, uh, I'm going to first hide because this uh, we do have one platform, which is not a clone. Um, but we will also have to delete all the clones. And before we do that, it's important to stop the other scripts as delete this clone is a final block, if you want to put it that way. And we can't code stuff after that. So add in a hide, stop all other scripts in sprite, and then delete this clone. So when the player finally loses, all this is going to happen and uh, then we head back to the thing. So as you can see, I'm just going to move out to the left and boom, we lost and you can see that our score is 75. Now this was a little bit below than usual and I think that is because our um, play button was supposed to be going to the center and I forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do is head over to the play button and add an, addition, uh, an additional go to right here. So I'm going to go to. Uh, x0, y0. And now I'm going to click that player lose again. And there you go. Your score is 25 and the game ends. Perfect. So when we press it once again, you can see that our code starts all over. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be your entire Doodle Chum game. It was only four parts, but already you can see that you have a pretty neat uh, Doodle Chum game. Obviously, it's not as good as the original video game, which went viral a few years ago, where uh, you know, you had rockets and a lot more of the fun stuff. But this is the functional version of it where you have platforms and you also have a score that's constantly incrementing. Now, in addition to this, if you are a scratcher in Scratch 3, I think that's what they call it, you can actually set up a high score as well. And I can do that, but I'm not going to do that because, well, I'm going to assume that most of you are not scratchers in Scratch 3. So I'm going to leave it right here. But in case you want to add in a high score, Feel free to do that. It's just a simple if then condition where if the high score is greater than the score, you just set the high score to be the score and you, you will make the game a little bit more fun. And in addition to all of that, you can just make your score go to whatever corner of the screen you want to. I'm going to make sure it goes to the top right and you could really customize that as you wish. If you've enjoyed this game series, then make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here and that will take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next series.